Hey friends, if you haven't heard, BitUI is an awesome headless component library for Svelte and recently they hit a 1.0 release, so congratulations on that. So what is actually BitUI? Well, basically BitUI is a flexible, unstyled and accessible primitives that provide the foundation for building your own high quality component library. And BitUI has over 30 components ranging from an accordion to date pickers and a custom select menu completely tailor-made for your project. Alright, but what is the difference between a pre-styled component library and a headless component library? So in this example I'm going to show you the use of Flow by Svelte, which is a traditional pre-styled component library. So usually when you're using a pre-styled component library, you buy into their design system and etc. Of course, most of them provide theming options and etc. But you're fighting against them. And this isn't picking on Flow by any of these libraries, it's just different. If you like their design system, you just want something quickly done, then this is perfect for you. So for example, we can see here how we import Flow by Svelte. And here in AppCSS, we can just use Telvin and we can initialize the Flow by plugin, the final variant, including some theming options, and that's basically it. So now you can see we have this wonderful accordion, and that's basically it. But now you're bought into their system, you have to follow their rules, and you're only limited to what you can do. So, for example, if we want to remove these rounded borders, we can provide a flush prop. So now you can change the appearance of this very easily. But as you can see, it's really not that flexible. And also notice how the elements you provide are fixed, so you can, for example, swap the title with the arrow on the right and etc. It's really just not possible. And another thing that really bothers me when you buy into some of these UI libraries, so for example, if you look at this select from Flowbyte, it looks really pretty until we open the select, and then we can see it uses the native select under the hood. And that's really not a problem, but that's something that I can do myself. I at least, at minimum, expect from a UI component library to do this for me. And I'm not going to name names, but there's been one web components library recently that raised $1 million. And when I opened their example and I look at their select, it was just a normal native select, which is really disappointing. All that money probably went just to convince someone to offer web components. Ha, <laughs> got him! But headless libraries, on the other hand, can get away with that because they actually have to implement everything from scratch and make sure that it's accessible. So by default, you get unstyled components where you have control over every element. Alright, with that out of the way, let's look at the headless UI library approach and how Beats UI does it. Alright, here is how the same accordion looks like in Beats UI. First, we're going to import accordion from Beats UI. Then, we're going to initialize accordion.root, so this holds all of the logic for the accordion. And then, we're going to say accordion.item, and inside of the item, we have a header with a trigger. And then, we can also include the content using accordion.content. And as you can see, it doesn't look like anything because it's completely unstyled. And if we inspect this element, we can see that BitsUI takes care of all of the accessibility and everything that would be so tedious to do yourself. So now we have a completely customizable accordion. And as you can see, we're in complete control of the contents. But let's give it some styles using Telvin CSS. How beautiful is that, friends? And of course, you can use the bind directive to get the value or the reference to the element itself. So you can see here we have these four items in the accordion, and we can see which one is selected. And of course, you can use Svelte's function bindings to have more control what happens when you read and write the value. Alright, so let's talk about styling Beats UI components. Styling components might not be your thing and you just want something beautifully designed out of the box. But don't worry because Beats UI has you covered and they have base styles using Tailwind in every example. So you can see at this accordion example, it already looks great out of the box. So you can just come here at the code, you can already see they provide some base styles and you can just copy this over in your project. But of course, you're not only limited to Tailwind CSS, but you can also use other things such as Uno CSS. And if you don't like any of these options, you can just use regular CSS. So let's actually look at how you can style Beats UI components. So in the first example, we're using Tailwind CSS, same as before, and you can see everything looks fine. But of course, you can just use regular CSS. That being said, it comes with a caveat, because you can't normally scope these classes to components, because Svelte isn't going to know that these classes are being used and are going to be removed. So you have to define them in app CSS globally. And besides using regular classes, you can use data attributes to style elements. And you can also combine data attributes for the state to create things such as these animations. So here where we have content, we just define a high transition, and then we can say when the data state is open, then we can get access to the bits internal variable for the height, and that's how we can animate the height of the element. But if you really want scope styles, then there is a really powerful pattern in Beats UI using render delegation. So instead of just passing children to the trigger, we can actually use this child snippet. So we get the props back, then this is the most important part, 
we have to spread the props on the element but you can use any element you want and you're going to have the same accessibility and other things that beats ui provides and as you can see now we can have scope styles because this component is now in the scope of your component and this pattern is really great if you want to use custom transitions such as swell transitions which you're going to look at in the animation section and if you want to learn even more about styling the beats ui docs have even more examples so let's look at how you can do transitions in beats ui all right, so here I have a Tailwind example and in app CSS, I define this keyframe accordion down and accordion up. And then in the team section, we can define these variables animate accordion down and animate accordion up, which are eternally used by Beats UI. So the only thing we have to do when we go to app.swell, we just have to define on the content these classes. We can just say, hey, apply animate accordion up when the data state is closed and apply animate accordion down when the data state is open. And now when we've done that, we can see we have this beautiful animation. All right, but maybe you want to use custom transitions such as one from Swell. So let's replace these tailwind classes with Swell transitions. And this is how simple that is. So we just import slide from Swell transition, and then we can use render delegation. We can just pass the child snippet. Here we get the props and the open state. So if this is open, then we're going to show the content and we're going to just use the transition slide. So you can see it works the same as before. And this is all possible thanks to the force mount prop, which is set to true, so the component is mounted. And of course, you can learn more about transitions in the Beats UI docs. All right, let's talk about how you can create reusable components. All right, here I have a regular accordion from Beats UI, but it would be so much nicer if we can make this somehow reusable. And of course, I'm going to leave the styling choice up to you, but in this example, I just want to focus on creating a reusable component. All right, so let's create our usable accordion component. For this, we're going to create an accordion item component, and then we're going to import accordion from Beats UI. And for the props, we're going to have title, content, and the rest of the props, which we're going to spread on accordion item, and then we can just pass the title and the content. So now we have our usable accordion item component. Next, in the accordion.svelte component, we can again import accordion from Beats UI, and then we can import our own custom accordion item component. And for the props, we're going to have items, value and a ref which can be both bindable and we're going to spread the rest of the props and now we can define accordion.root so we can bind the value and we can bind the reference to the element and then we spread the rest of the props and then we're going to loop over all of the items and give them a unique key by combining the title and the index and then we can just spread the item props and that's it now we created our usable accordion component so going back to app.swell now we can replace this with our custom accordion component And this is the main reason why you would want to use headless components, because they let you create your own components using your own design system, however you see fit. And the Beats UI docs also do a great job of showing you how to create reusable components. But that's basically everything you have to know to get started with Beats UI. And they have some other things such as a Figma design document, and Beats UI also provides LLM friendly documentation. If you like Beats UI, do me a favor and give them a star on GitHub, which is free, but of course you can also support the offer financially. That's it. You can support me by becoming a patron and you can also join the Discord. If you like what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.